good morning to you all. Meza Matt back here with another video for y'all. Appreciate y'all for watching this. Uh, we've got some important things to go over today in this video for your September 18th weather forecast here across the United States and into the tropics. We now have the potential for what could become a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico later on next week. The, there's, a, there's a lot of models that are putting this uh, towards Florida, towards Louisiana, kind of in, in different areas here. We're going to talk about, you know, that, that potential here in just a little bit as well as the severe weather threat for today and tomorrow. Uh, we're not expecting, you know, widespread severe weather outbreak, but we are having the chance for a, a conditional severe weather threat today and a more organized severe weather threat tomorrow across portions of Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, and down into Kansas and Missouri. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into the forecast for today really quickly. If you guys were watching the live stream yesterday, yesterday's event did not unfold the way it was supposed to unfold. It was actually lesser on the severe side. That's why we weren't on for so long yesterday, but we were talking about the chance for some wind yesterday. Uh, over 75 miles an hour. I didn't see anything over 75. Not saying it didn't happen, but I didn't see any warnings or anything that presented over that. We did have a couple 70 mile an hour warnings if you were in those in parts of Colorado and New Mexico yesterday. Um, I, you know, just hope you guys are doing well with all of that as well down there. So um, I want to go ahead and get into this forecast really quickly for today. We do have a small little marginal and slight risk for severe weather. This does go from parts of uh, Minnesota and North Dakota down into South Dakota. We've got Iowa. We've got Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas here. This is a conditional risk today, meaning if storms do fire off, they could have a chance for a couple wind uh, wind gusts over 60 miles an hour, a couple hail storms over one to two inches in diameter, as well as a tornado risk that could accompany any storms in the Iowa, Nebraska area up into the Dakotas and parts of northern Minnesota here. There's a little bit of shear up here. This could interact with some cells if they do fire off. There is a capping inversion in place, basically meaning uh, that there's a temperature inversion. So storms may fire today. Storms may not fire. If they do fire, just be weather aware in those areas today uh, here in the parts of the Sioux Falls area, Sioux City here. Once again, along Interstate uh, 29 and 94 here, as well as 90 from Sioux City all the way to the uh, Fargo area here in parts of the uh, North Dakota area. So like I said, guys, conditional risk today. We're not going live for today's risk at all. I'm actually trying to get caught up on some homework. That way I can be uh, legit for you guys next week because we are prepping uh, the Florida coastline as well as the Gulf of Mexico potential area for a hurricane next week. Uh, and we'll get like I said into that here in just a second. But you can see that upper level low. This is going to be working its way into Canada over the next two days. That associated cold front that'll be trailing down here for parts of the um, central and northern plains today. Any storms that do fire off, like I said, will have the potential for most of damaging wind and hail with a conditional tornado risk in the uh, Iowa, Minnesota area there. Now, tomorrow's risk a little bit more different. We will be going live more than likely for tomorrow's risk because there is a chance for more of a bigger tornado risk. We've got a 5 and a 2% tornado risk tomorrow here in that yellow shaded area from parts of northern Iowa into Minnesota and western Wisconsin. That's a level 2 risk in the yellow there and a level 1 risk in the green. Parts of that 2% tornado risk does come down into the Topeka, Kansas City area as well as Des Moines, Omaha. So be mindful of that. Could see a conditional spin of tornado if things do kind of align with that. But outside of that, the main threat will be damaging wind and hail and I will go ahead and show you guys that threat for tomorrow there is that tornado risk the two percent in the green from Kansas City all the way up to the Canada line five percent in the maroon there so we can see a bigger tornado risk so far uh tomorrow than any day this week the wind threat as well as a 15 and a five percent I would not be surprised if we got an enhanced risk for damaging winds in here there are a lot of model agreements showing a more linear line of storms so that would be potential there so if you're in the Minneapolis area Brooklyn Parks Rochester Euclid uh lacrosse area there be mindful of damaging winds as well as a significant hail threat couldn't develop as well here in the northern plains in Minnesota and western Wisconsin as we can see hail anywhere in that black hatched area over two to three inches in diameter potentially so very mindful of that uh, I do think the potential for tomorrow to go enhanced is kind of on the table so we'll be we'll be updating you guys on the on that forecast in tomorrow's video as well as if we do do an update live stream tonight we might we'll just kind of talk about that and see how much score can get done and if I get on tonight I'll see you guys on stream tonight if not we'll see you guys in the video for tomorrow now, I do want to go ahead and pop up the future cash for the next 48 hours. You can see this bowling ball trough ejection moving through a well-organized trough. The reason we didn't have so much severe weather yesterday and the way yesterday didn't unfold is the lack of moisture and dew points. Um, our tropical system that was off the coastline of North Carolina kind of took all that dew point and instability and moisture and took it with that system instead of bringing it with this one. So this could actually have been a way worse situation yesterday if we would have had more uh, dew points. But... Going into today, showers and storms will be ongoing through the morning hours, potentially here. This could stabilize the atmosphere, and it looks to stabilize the atmosphere uh, in parts of that bigger risk zone here into Iowa, Minnesota, and parts of the Dakotas here. Be mindful of that, but any storms that do fire off here, there's potential after 5 o'clock along that slight risk here that storms could potentially fire off and either produce an isolated tornado, damaging winds, or hail back down here into Texas, Oklahoma as well could see a conditional wind and hail threat, but the models are just not showing much of anything with this, at least until we get to tomorrow. Now tomorrow, that low pressure system advances a lot closer to where our risk zone is actually at, uh, and you can see for tomorrow, we actually have 
the risk zone here. Let me transition it back over here so you guys can see it. This is the risk zone here for your Thursday. We can see those showers and storms go more discreet and then go linear. So that bigger tornado risk will accompany the eastern side here of the um, Minneapolis, Minnesota area into parts of western Wisconsin. And then we get more of a, of, a, of a line of storms that develops extending from Des Moines all the way down here to parts of potentially Kansas City and into parts of central Wisconsin overnight tomorrow night. So this will more than likely be an event we go live for. We'll talk about this and kind of do the thought process throughout the day with this as I kind of get my you know, stream and stuff ready for tomorrow. Um, but be mindful of that. The tornado risk as well is present for tomorrow too. Um, conditional tornado risk once again today and tomorrow. So be mindful of that if you are up here in the Northern Plains. Now, the bigger conversation that we're going to start to talk about is this yellow blob right down here in the um, Caribbean Sea. There's a lot of social media hype already about this. We kind of hinted at it yesterday on the stream. We've kind of been talking about it in, in the last couple of videos that I've been posting, but we do have the good potential here. And, and this is something that um, the National Hurricane Center is pretty confident on. They're not upgrading the development region quite yet. And I think this will increase over the next couple of days. Right now, we've got a 0% chance of this becoming a named storm in, in two days and a 20% chance in seven days. This number will go up. We'll probably be looking at an orange shaded area either tomorrow or by or Friday. Uh, because of the fact that we're growing in confidence, there's every model showing some type of system. It's the strength and the track of this that we're questionary on. Uh, but this does look to be potentially either moving in the Florida favor or the, the big bend area here in Florida, or potentially could hover off the eastern coastline of the eastern side of Florida. But the models are really pinning this toward the western Florida coastline. So for my Florida people, here we go once again. If you were not prepped for uh, another tropical system here, this is your time to do it. We're in that 7 to 10 day range now where we're trying to figure out what's going to happen with this system. Uh, the models are still, like I said, kind of, we're going to get a storm. It's just where is it going to go? And, and, you know, trying to figure that out, we'll start to fine tune that forecast over the next couple of days for you guys. But do be watching there in Florida and be ready to go just in case something does happen. I think the confidence is growing that we are going to have some type of named storm by the end of this weekend and starting next week out. So I do want to go ahead and turn you guys' heads here to the tropics. Let's go down here and let's actually pull up our latest GFS model run here and we'll go into the Caribbean Sea. Uh, we're going to show the European, we'll show this and we'll show the icon, I believe, is what we're going to show with this model run here. Um, GFS, as of this morning, does have a low developing down here in the Caribbean. We're going to be watching right around that Saturday, Sunday time frame. Uh, this is the area right here that we'll be watching. This is where that low could develop by Sunday or Monday of next week. And once that low develops, how quick does it develop? Where does it develop at? That's going to be the, the confidence increase around the strength and track of how this is going to go. I do think the odds of us getting a hurricane are, are pretty high, just given the water temperatures off the coast of Florida, as well as the favorable shear. The, there's going to be no shear or dry air in place with this system. The question area is going to be, where does it track at? And that's going to be positioned by a trough ejection that will be moving through the United States late next week that could you know, either steer this right or steer this north or, or wherever it's going to go. There's a lot of people as well that are saying that this could potentially take an Ian or an Idalia track. If you guys are in Florida, you know what I mean by that. It basically went into the Big Bend of Florida, right north of Tampa, and, and rode the eastern coastline all the way up into the northeast and caused widespread rain and damage and all of that, etc. So that's something that potentially could happen if some set scenarios happen. But as we go here into Tuesday and Wednesday next week, looks to be that we probably have a tropical depression by next Tuesday or Wednesday. What does this do as it goes into the Gulf of Mexico? Does it stay west more of Florida? Does it go east? We're trying to figure that out, but the models do have a uh, 991 millibar, 994 millibar tropical storm or Cat 1 hurricane around the Big Bend area by next Thursday or Friday. So something we're going to have to watch here, that is one model scenario. I want to go ahead and show you guys the latest European model. Now, the European model is a little bit more different as far as where this is going to develop at. The European model run actually has this low developing in the Caribbean, but tracking more northwest and going into the Yucatan before kind of developing over here in the in the southern part of the Gulf and then working its way north on the western side. So that's the outlier here. We're going to have to wait for, like I said, that model agreement consistency to start to kind of develop here. Um, the ICON model itself here, let me run to the ICON model and we can talk about what the ICON is showing. This has done really well with past hurricanes this year so far. Uh, the ICON model showing that Caribbean low developing there in the Caribbean and then tracking its way north into the northwestern Gulf. And this would be more of an interesting scenario um, depending on where the trough is at, what's setting up for late next week. But if we get this to steer more into the northwestern Gulf, we could have more of a strengthening process as well as potentially going towards Florida. So there's a big question mark on where this is going to go. So please, 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 guys, pay attention who you watch on social media and who you get your information from. Because if they're saying there's a monster cat three or higher hurricane or wherever coming into Florida, that's not valid right now. We don't even know if this is going to become a hurricane, but 
the confidence is increasing of at least a small end hurricane as of right now for the high ceiling. So this is something we're going to have to watch very, very closely for you guys. We'll keep you guys updated on the latest on that forecast. Now, I do want to go back uh, to our latest uh, GFS run here, and I want to talk about what the overall pattern is going to be for the next couple of weeks here. And you can see that load that's going to be spinning up in the northern plains that'll bring us severe weather in the next two days here. We're going to watch for some heavy rain, some showers and storms, and possibly some severe weather to spark with a new low that develops on Saturday or Sunday here across the Central Plains. So if you're in Oklahoma, Nebraska, Missouri, Iowa, Texas, uh, Eastern Colorado, there's a chance we could see more favorability for some severe weather as we get closer to the end of this weekend. It looks to be that Saturday and the uh, Friday time frame look to be pretty quiet across much of the United States. We could even see some snow showers break out across the uh, northern and higher elevations of Colorado. But heavier rainfall moving into the Midwest throughout the early part of next week as we're watching that Gulf system advance, advance here. We could see a trailing cold front with some showers and some storms. This is going to be that trough ejection that's kind of swooping up here towards the Texas and into the Ozarks here, as well as that tropical wave. If that trough ejection comes in quicker, it'll push this system more to the right. If it waits, it'll push it more to the left due to that steering mechanism here. So we're going to have to watch really, really closely. And, you know, if this scenario were to unfold, this is once again a scenario, uh, a 987, you know, millibar low moving into the big bend here and then riding through the East Atlantic and Mid-Atlantic here and in the Northeast, this would be not a good scenario as far as heavy rainfall once again for North Carolina, South Carolina, um, into the Northeast area, as well as the potential tornado threat that could unfold with that. So we've got a lot to kind of pan out uh, over the next couple of days and into next week. So we'll keep you guys updated on the latest on that. Please, 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 once again, guys, fact check your sources. If you see something that looks questionary in the weather world, fact check it, look it up, make sure it's legit. I'm not going to be giving you guys false information on here. We're all about keeping people safe and, and giving you guys the best and keeping you guys ahead of the storm. So I will continue to give you guys updates. If I see something that pops out today or without throughout the day here with the model runs, we'll do a live stream tonight and kind of hype on and talk about it. Um, if not, I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. If you're in the severe weather for today and tomorrow, uh, be weather aware, stay safe, have a way to get those alerts on your phone, and I will see you guys in the next one, guys.